Good evening everyone, it's uh, Zola at a slightly odd time, uh, half past midnight and uh, it's mainly half past midnight because I've tried recording this about five times and each time something has gone horribly wrong so uh, hopefully six times a charm, yeah. Uh, today I'm here to be just introducing you to um, a short series of tutorials I'm going to be doing to uh, blow apart the MoGraph module and uh, the myths and how it works because MoGraph is basically, if you use Cinema you will know that this is the most powerful uh, part of the program. It's uh, Maxon's trump card. Uh, Max and um, Maya users can only wish for this kind of functionality when it comes to creating motion graphics and it's the reason why um, many artists and uh, film companies have actually started learning um, Maxon is just so that they can uh, get into the MoGraph module and uh, start their kind of motion graphics animations in here before exporting them to Maya and uh, Max where obviously they have superior rendering and um, simulation capabilities but um, it's certainly a really really powerful tool for building motion graphics and not to be sniffed at uh, as you might have seen with the recent uh, Tron breakdowns that came out uh, all very cool stuff so enough waffling um, let's get into it so the moon graph is found here and uh, it's split into two menus on the right as you can see from this drop down we have effectors which are all like purple ish and then on this side we have uh, the green moon graph objects and then we have these two which are kind of neither here nor there uh, they kind of sit more within this family but um, as you can see they've been left outside this uh, fin bar and you're not allowed in son uh, this guy's too young and uh, this guy just smells a bit funny so uh, most plants having none of it and um, they're basically somewhere in between these two but um, I will basically my aim is to do a whole tutorial on the cloner, one on the matrix etc etc for all these and then uh, probably maybe split the effectors into two or possibly three lessons so we can uh, know exactly what each of these does and uh, how they work in combination with each other. So uh, just for today I'm going to be going over a rough overview of the um, relationship between um, these two sets of um, families basically. And the first thing you have to know about MoGraph is um, you have the MoGraph objects which are all um, here and then you have the effectors here and if you want your animation to work properly you usually need one of each so uh, just remember one plus one and I'm going to bring out the cloner object which is probably the most used uh, MoGraph object and I'm going to drop a cube into it as you can see the cloner does surprisingly clone things who would have thunk it so um, Yes, so it's instantly clone that cube into uh, a radial here. You can clone into grids. It's up to you what you want to do with it. And there's so many ways, like I say, I will be doing a lesson on the cloner. So let's not get into that too much. And I'm going to bring in one effector as well to show you the effect. An effect I can have. Bleh, bleh. Try saying that with wet wine gum. Okay, um, the random effector, as you can see here, randomizes things. Who the guest? Amazing. So uh, here we have it. Effect uh, randomizing the position. You can randomize the scale. Lovely. And then um, you can randomize the rotation as well. So basically, that's what the random effect does. But once again, so much more powerful. Uh, in fact, just by going into noise here, you can see you can start your own little uh, cube party which uh, are always fun unless you're a triangle and you're not invited uh, cube parties are awesome so that's roughly how to work things um, as you can see here if we go into our MoGraph object and all these things have this in common they have an effectors field where I'm going to delete, can you see if I delete the random effector from that field uh, it has no effect and then I can bring it in and I can limit its effects so um, just to almost nothing here and then bring it up so yeah that's how those work 
So like I said, a lesson on each of these um, and you'll hopefully be flying. Real quick though, I'm just going to show you what these uh, little ones above do, in case you are curious. Uh, we're going to have a look at the grid tool first. And this, basically, just by dragging it out, you can create a whole load of cubes. It's like uh, diabetics, worst nightmare. All these sugar cubes here. And we've created, can you see, it's automatically created a cloner with a more instance, which, as you can see, is a MoGraph object in itself. Uh, if I undo this, um, select the grid tool, I can also make it clones. So when I drag it out, can you see now they'll be um, grey. And inside we've just got a cloner with a cube. Uh, so basically the cloner is referencing that cube. So I can delete the original one and this um, field of cubes will still be here. And uh, the radio one does exactly the same thing, you know. It's not not complicated stuff. I probably don't use those tools that much because I want usually more control over it and so you'd probably start with a cloner and then um, drop it in yourself and then build it from the ground up really and so I would probably recommend doing it that way around bring a sphere back in here still definitely got um, that tool selected okay so last but not least we have the MoGraph selection tool and this is the easiest way to think about it is we have it sits in the MoGraph family so you know it works with these objects here and if I bring a, a cloner in here drop my sphere in I'm probably going to bring my spheres size down as it's a little large and uh, with our cloner we're going to create a radial array so five cubes uh, actually no grid array will probably work best for this so we're going to spread this out so um, lots of spheres now if I go into my MoGraph selection tool you'll see we get these little red dots appear why could that be? so we're going to paint over these like so as you can see it's now created a little tag and uh, that's the mode we used to select it so um, now let's go back and create our random effector again and we're going to switch this to noise again and oh my days let's just crank this up so we can see more what it's doing the it's using the uh, tag that we created by painting these clones and so now that is only affecting the ones that are in that cache and if you go into here basically this is done uh, this has been done automatically as you can see the selection is now in the selection field of the random effector if I uh, deleted this so I'm going to delete that and create a new random as you can see that's where it would fit so um, go into our effects field put our random effector in uh, we're going to change this to noise so by default it would affect everything and then you would bring your tag in and so that's how you can get it to affect only these and this is really powerful if you think about it because you can create no, uh, multiple MoGraph tags and say you want to do, make a tag for just the top line and then apply maybe um, I'm just gonna uh, maybe a formula effector who knows you know obviously um, this isn't gonna work because um, it's this if I bring the same tag in we're gonna get bring this up make the formula effect maybe the scales of the um, things which is not working for some reason which I'm too tired to work out right now I'm rolling on very little sleep so yes that is a quick overview of what we're going to be covering so first of all we'll probably tackle the claw now probably make my way down through these one by one by one by one and uh, I'll probably like obviously be using these to show you what they do as I'm doing each lesson and then I'll probably do an overview lesson of um, maybe these five and then these five and then the other three or how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen of them. 
so uh, I might do seven in each lesson. Some some math for you there. Who said this show wasn't educational? Okay, so hope that's been fun, and uh, more importantly, I hope you're excited to learn more about MoGraph. I certainly am uh, excited to teach you about it because I think this, like I said before, is the core of the program, and it's the reason why uh, you want to learn cinema is this module. And uh, hopefully, eventually, we'll be going into thinking particles and um, espresso and possibly cappuccino as well uh, which is all more advanced stuff but that's way down the road we don't want to get worried about that just yet so uh, my aim is to create hopefully one of these I'm not going to promise one a week because as many of you know I do tutorials for uh, John at Motionworks as well and so uh, if I do one of those in a week I probably wouldn't do one of these uh, just because I have very little spare time at the moment so just keep your eye on the site really or the Twitter feed and uh, I'll let you know when these things are coming. So um, hope to see you soon and uh, yeah, let's get excited about MoGraph.